analysis of variance is a collection of statistical models used to analyze the differences between group means and their associated procedures, developed by R. A. Fisher. In the ANOVA setting, the observed variance in a particular variable is partitioned into components attributable to different sources of variation. In its simplest form, ANOVA provides a statistical test of whether or not the means of several groups are equal, and therefore generalizes the t-test to more than two groups. As doing multiple two-sample t-tests would result in an increased chance of committing a statistical type I error, ANOVAs are useful in comparing three or more means for statistical significance. Motivating example The analysis of variance can be used as an exploratory tool to explain observations. A dog show provides an example. A dog show is not a random sampling of the breed, it is typically limited to dogs that are male, adult, purebred and exemplary. A histogram of dog weights from a show might plausibly be rather complex, like the yellow-orange distribution shown in the illustrations. Suppose we want to predict the weight of a dog based on a certain set of characteristics of each dog. Before we could do that, we would need to explain the distribution of weights by dividing the dog population into groups based on those characteristics. A successful grouping will split dogs such that a, each group has a low variance of dog weights and b, the mean of each group is distinct. In the illustrations to the right, each group is identified as x1, x2, etc. In the first illustration, we divide the dogs according to the product of two binary groupings, young versus old, and short haired versus long haired. Since the distributions of dog weight within each of the groups has a large variance, and since the means are very close across groups, grouping dogs by these characteristics does not produce an effective way to explain the variation in dog weights. Knowing which group a dog is in does not allow us to make any reasonable statements as to what that dog's weight is likely to be. Thus, this grouping fails to fit the distribution we are trying to explain. An attempt to explain the weight distribution by grouping dogs is and would probably be somewhat more successful. The heaviest showed dogs are likely to be big strong working breeds, while breeds kept as pets tend to be smaller and thus lighter. As shown by the second illustration, the distributions have variances that are considerably smaller than in the first case, and the means are more reasonably distinguishable. However, the significant overlap of distributions, for example, means that we cannot reliably say that X1 and X2 are truly distinct. An attempt to explain weight by breed is likely to produce a very good fit. All Chihuahuas are light and all St. Bernards are heavy. The difference in weights between setters and pointers does not justify separate breeds. The analysis of variance provides the formal tools to justify these intuitive judgments. A common use of the method is the analysis of experimental data or the development of models. The method has some advantages over correlation, not all of the data must be numeric and one result of the method is a judgment in the confidence in an explanatory relationship. Background and Terminology ANOVA is a particular form of statistical hypothesis testing heavily used in the analysis of experimental data. A statistical hypothesis test is a method of making decisions using data. A test result is called statistically significant if it is deemed unlikely to have occurred by chance, assuming the truth of the null hypothesis. A statistically significant result, when a probability is less than a threshold, justifies the rejection of the null hypothesis but only if the a priori probability of the null hypothesis is not high. In the typical application of ANOVA, the null hypothesis is that all groups are simply random samples of the same population. For example, when studying the effect of different treatments on similar samples of patients, the null hypothesis would be that all treatments have the same effect. Rejecting the null hypothesis would imply that different treatments result in altered effects. By construction, hypothesis testing limits the rate of type I errors to a significance level. Experimenters also wish to limit type II errors. The type II error rate is a function of several things including sample size, significance level and effect size. The terminology of ANOVA is largely from the statistical design of experiments. The experimenter adjusts factors and measures responses in an attempt to determine an effect. 
factors are assigned to experimental units by a combination of randomization and blocking to ensure the validity of the results. Blinding keeps the weighing impartial. Responses show a variability that is partially the result of the effect and is partially random error. ANOVA is the synthesis of several ideas and it is used for multiple purposes. As a consequence, it is difficult to define concisely or precisely. Classical ANOVA for balanced data does three things at once. In short, ANOVA is a statistical tool used in several ways to develop and confirm an explanation for the observed data. Additionally, as a result, ANOVA has long enjoyed the status of being the most used statistical technique in psychological research. ANOVA is probably the most useful technique in the field of statistical inference. ANOVA is difficult to teach, particularly for complex experiments, with split plot designs being notorious. In some cases the proper application of the method is best determined by problem pattern recognition followed by consultation of a classic authoritative test. Design of experiments terms, condensed from the NIST Engineering Statistics Handbook, Section 5.7. A glossary of DOE terminology. Balanced design, an experimental design where all cells have the same number of observations. Blocking, a schedule for conducting treatment combinations in an experimental study such that any effects on the experimental results due to a known change in raw materials, operators, machines, etc., become concentrated in the levels of the blocking variable. The reason for blocking is to isolate a systematic effect and prevent it from obscuring the main effects. Blocking is achieved by restricting randomization. Design, a set of experimental runs which allows the fit of a particular model and the estimate of effects. DOE, design of experiments. An approach to problem solving involving collection of data that will support valid, defensible, and supportable conclusions. Effect. How changing the settings of a factor changes the response. The effect of a single factor is also called a main effect. Error, unexplained variation in a collection of observations. DOEs typically require understanding of both random error and lack of fit error. Experimental unit, the entity to which a specific treatment combination is applied. Factors, process inputs an investigator manipulates to cause a change in the output. Lack of fit error, error that occurs when the analysis omits one or more important terms or factors from the process model. Including replication in a DOE allows separation of experimental error into its components, lack of fit and random error. Model, mathematical relationship which relates changes in a given response to changes in one or more factors. Random error, error that occurs due to natural variation in the process. Random error is typically assumed to be normally distributed with zero mean and a constant variance. Random error is also called experimental error. Randomization, a schedule for allocating treatment material and for conducting treatment combinations in a DOE such that the conditions in one run neither depend on the conditions of the previous run nor predict the conditions in the subsequent runs. Replication, performing the same treatment combination more than once. Including replication allows an estimate of the random error independent of any lack of fit error. Responses, the output, S, of a process. Sometimes called dependent variable, S. Treatment, A treatment is a specific combination of factor levels whose effect is to be compared with other treatments. Classes of models, there are three classes of models used in the analysis of variance, and these are outlined here. Fixed effects models. The fixed effects model of analysis of variance applies to situations in which the experimenter applies one or more treatments to the subjects of the experiment to see if the response variable values change. This allows the experimenter to estimate the ranges of response variable values that the treatment would generate in the population as a whole. Random effects models. Random effects models are used when the treatments are not fixed. This occurs when the various factor levels are sampled from a larger population. Because the levels themselves are random variables, some assumptions in the method of contrasting the treatments differ from the fixed effects model. Mixed effects models. 
a mixed effects model contains experimental factors of both fixed and random effects types, with appropriately different interpretations and analysis for the two types. Example, teaching experiments could be performed by a university department to find a good introductory textbook, with each text considered a treatment. The fixed effects model would compare a list of candidate texts. The random effects model would determine whether important differences exist among a list of randomly selected texts. The mixed effects model would compare the incumbent texts to randomly selected alternatives. Defining fixed and random effects has proven elusive, with competing definitions arguably leading toward a linguistic quagmire. Assumptions of ANOVA the analysis of variance has been studied from several approaches, the most common of which uses a linear model that relates the response to the treatments and blocks. Note that the model is linear in parameters but may be nonlinear across factor levels. Interpretation is easy when data is balanced across factors but much deeper understanding is needed for unbalanced data. Textbook analysis using a normal distribution, the analysis of variance can be presented in terms of a linear model which makes the following assumptions about the probability distribution of the responses, independence of observations a euro this is an assumption of the model that simplifies the statistical analysis. Normality a euro the distributions of the residuals are normal. The quality of variances, called homocedasticity a euro the variance of data in groups should be the same. The separate assumptions of the textbook model imply that the errors are independently, identically, and normally distributed for fixed effects models, that is, that the errors are independent and randomization based analysis. In a randomized controlled experiment, the treatments are randomly assigned to experimental units, following the experimental protocol. This randomization is objective and declared before the experiment is carried out. The objective random assignment is used to test the significance of the null hypothesis following the ideas of C. S. Pock and Ronald A. Fisher. This design-based analysis was discussed and developed by Francis J. Anscombe at Rotarmstead Experimental Station and by Oscar Kempthorne at Iowa State University. Kempthorne and his students make an assumption of unit treatment and activity, which is discussed in the books of Kempthorne and David A. Cox. Unit treatment and activity, in its simplest form, the assumption of unit treatment and activity states that the observed response from experimental unit when receiving treatment can be written as the sum of the unit's response and the treatment effect, that is. The assumption of unit treatment and activity implies that, for every treatment, the TH treatment have exactly the same effect on every experiment unit. The assumption of unit treatment and activity usually cannot be directly falsified, according to Cox and Kempthorne. However, many consequences of treatment unit additivity can be falsified. For a randomized experiment, the assumption of unit treatment additivity implies that the variance is constant for all treatments. Therefore, by contraposition, a necessary condition for unit treatment additivity is that the variance is constant. The use of unit treatment additivity and randomization is similar to the design-based inference that is standard in finite population survey sampling. Derived linear model, Kempthorne uses the randomization distribution and the assumption of unit treatment additivity to produce a derived linear model, very similar to the textbook model discussed previously. The test statistics of this derived linear model are closely approximated by the test statistics of an appropriate normal linear model according to approximation theorems and simulation studies. However, there are differences. For example, the randomization-based analysis results in a small but negative correlation between the observations. In the randomization-based analysis, there is no assumption of a normal distribution and certainly no assumption of independence. On the contrary, the observations are dependent. The randomization-based analysis has the disadvantage that its exposition involves tedious algebra and extensive time. Since the randomization-based analysis is complicated and is closely approximated by the approach using the normal linear model, most teachers emphasize the normal linear model approach. Few statisticians object to model-based analysis of balanced randomized experiments. Statistical models for observational data, however, 
when applied to data from non-randomized experiments or observational studies, model-based analysis lacks the warrant of randomization. For observational data, the derivation of confidence intervals must use subjective models, as emphasized by Ronald A. Fisher and his followers. In practice, the estimates of treatment effects from observational studies generally are often inconsistent. In practice, statistical models and observational data are useful for suggesting hypotheses that should be treated very cautiously by the public. Summary of assumptions The normal model based ANOVA analysis assumes the independence, normality, and homogeneity of the variances of the residuals. The randomization based analysis assumes only the homogeneity of the variances of the residuals and uses the randomization procedure of the experiment. Both these analyses require homoscedasticity, as an assumption for the normal model analysis and as a consequence of randomization and additivity for the randomization based analysis. However, studies of processes that change variances rather than means have been successfully conducted using ANOVA. There are no necessary assumptions for ANOVA in its full generality, but the F test used for ANOVA hypothesis testing has assumptions and practical limitations which are of continuing interest. Problems which do not satisfy the assumptions of ANOVA can often be transformed to satisfy the assumptions. The property of unit treatment additivity is not invariant under a change of scale, so statisticians often use transformations to achieve unit treatment additivity. If the response variable is expected to follow a parametric family of probability distributions, then the statistician may specify that the responses be transformed to stabilize the variance. Also, a statistician may specify that logarithmic transforms be applied to the responses, which are believed to follow a multiplicative model. According to Cauchy's functional equation theorem, the logarithm is the only continuous transformation that transforms real multiplication to addition. Characteristics of ANOVA ANOVA is used in the analysis of comparative experiments, those in which only the difference in outcomes is of interest. The statistical significance of the experiment is determined by a ratio of two variances. This ratio is independent of several possible alterations to the experimental observations, adding a constant to all observations does not alter significance. Multiplying all observations by a constant does not alter significance. So ANOVA statistical significance results are independent of constant bias and scaling errors as well as the units used in expressing observations. In the era of mechanical calculation it was common to subtract a constant from all observations to simplify data entry. This is an example of data coding. Logic of ANOVA The calculations of ANOVA can be characterized as computing a number of means and variances, dividing two variances and comparing the ratio to a handbook value to determine statistical significance. Calculating a treatment effect is then trivial. The effect of any treatment is estimated by taking the difference between the mean of the observations which receive the treatment and the general mean. Partitioning of the sum of squares ANOVA uses traditional standardized terminology. The definitional equation of sample variance is, where the divisor is called the degrees of freedom, the summation is called the sum of squares, the result is called the mean square and the square terms are deviations from the sample mean. ANOVA estimates three sample variances, a total variance based on all the observation deviations from the grand mean, an error variance based on all the observation deviations from their appropriate treatment means and a treatment variance. The treatment variance is based on the deviations of treatment means from the grand mean, the result being multiplied by the number of observations in each treatment to account for the difference between the variance of observations and the variance of means. The fundamental technique is a partitioning of the total sum of squares SS into components related to the effects used in the model. For example, the model for a simplified ANOVA with one type of treatment at different levels. The number of degrees of freedom DF can be partitioned in a similar way. One of these components specifies a chi-squared distribution which describes the associated sum of squares, while the same is true for treatments if there is no treatment effect. See also lack of fit sum of squares. The F-test. 
the F-test is used for comparing the factors of the total deviation. For example, in one way, or single factor ANOVA, statistical significance is tested for by comparing the F-test statistic. Where misses mean square, equals number of treatments and equals total number of cases, to the F distribution with, degrees of freedom. Using the F distribution is a natural candidate because the test statistic is the ratio of two scaled sums of squares each of which follows a scaled chi squared distribution. The expected value of F is which is 1 for no treatment effect. As values of F increase above 1, the evidence is increasingly inconsistent with the null hypothesis. Two apparent experimental methods of increasing F are increasing the sample size and reducing the error variance by tight experimental controls. There are two methods of concluding the ANOVA hypothesis test, both of which produce the same result. The textbook method is to compare the observed value of F with the critical value of F determined from tables. The critical value of F is a function of the degrees of freedom of the numerator and the denominator and a significance level. If F A per million critical, the null hypothesis is rejected. The computer method calculates the probability of a value of F greater than or equal to the observed value. The null hypothesis is rejected if this probability is less than or equal to the significance level. The two methods. The ANOVAF test is known to be nearly optimal in the sense of minimizing false negative errors for a fixed rate of false positive errors. For example, to test the hypothesis that various medical treatments have exactly the same effect, the F test's p values closely approximate the permutation test's p values. The approximation is particularly close when the design is balanced. Such permutation tests characterize tests with maximum power against all alternative hypotheses, as observed by Rosenbaum. The ANOVA Far Euro test is recommended as a practical test because of its robustness against many alternative distributions. Extended logic. ANOVA consists of separable parts. Partitioning sources of variance and hypothesis testing can be used individually. ANOVA is used to support other statistical tools. Regression is first used to fit more complex models to data, then ANOVA is used to compare models with the objective of selecting simple, R, models that adequately describe the data. Such models could be fit without any reference to ANOVA but ANOVA tools could then be used to make some sense of the fitted models, and to test hypotheses about batches of coefficients. W. E. Think of the analysis of variance as a way of understanding and structuring multi-level models so you are not as an alternative to regression but as a tool for summarizing complex high-dimensional inferences. A. ANOVA for a single factor. The simplest experiment suitable for ANOVA analysis is the completely randomized experiment with a single factor. More complex experiments with a single factor involve constraints on randomization and include completely randomized blocks and Latin squares. The more complex experiments share many of the complexities of multiple factors. A relatively complete discussion of the analysis of the completely randomized experiment is available. ANOVA for multiple factors. ANOVA generalizes to the study of the effects of multiple factors. When the experiment includes observations at all combinations of levels of each factor, it is termed factorial. Factorial experiments are more efficient than a series of single factor experiments and the efficiency grows as the number of factors increases. Consequently, factorial designs are heavily used. The use of ANOVA to study the effects of multiple factors has a complication. In a three-way ANOVA with factors X, Y and Z, the ANOVA model includes terms for the main effects and terms for interactions. All terms require hypothesis tests. The proliferation of interaction terms increases the risk that some hypothesis test will produce a false positive by chance. Fortunately, Experience says that high-order interactions are rare. The ability to detect interactions is a major advantage of multiple-factor ANOVA. Testing one factor at a time hides interactions, but produces apparently inconsistent experimental results. Caution is advised when encountering interactions. 
test interaction terms first and expand the analysis beyond ANOVA if interactions are found. Texts vary in their recommendations regarding the continuation of the ANOVA procedure after encountering an interaction. Interactions complicate the interpretation of experimental data. Neither the calculations of significance nor the estimated treatment effects can be taken at face value. A significant interaction will often mask the significance of main effects. Graphical methods are recommended to enhance understanding. Regression is often useful. A lengthy discussion of interactions is available in Cox. Some interactions can be removed while others cannot. A variety of techniques are used with multiple factor ANOVA to reduce expense. One technique used in factorial designs is to minimize replication and to combine groups when effects are found to be statistically insignificant. An experiment with many insignificant factors may collapse into one with a few factors supported by many replications. Worked numeric examples, several fully worked numerical examples are available. A simple case uses one-way analysis. A more complex case uses two-way analysis. Associated analysis, some analysis is required in support of the design of the experiment while other analysis is performed after changes in the factors are formally found to produce statistically significant changes in the responses. Because experimentation is iterative, the results of one experiment alter plans for following experiments. Preparatory analysis, the number of experimental units, in the design of an experiment, the number of experimental units is planned to satisfy the goals of the experiment. Experimentation is often sequential. Early experiments are often designed to provide mean unbiased estimates of treatment effects and of experimental error. Later experiments are often designed to test a hypothesis that a treatment effect has an important magnitude. In this case, the number of experimental units is chosen so that the experiment is within budget and has adequate power, among other goals. Reporting sample size analysis is generally required in psychology. Provide information on sample size in the process that led to sample size decisions. The analysis, which is written in the experimental protocol before the experiment is conducted, is examined in grant applications and administrative review boards. Besides the power analysis, there are less formal methods for selecting the number of experimental units. These include graphical methods based on limiting the probability of false negative errors, graphical methods based on an expected variation increase and methods based on achieving a desired confident interval. Power analysis, power analysis is often applied in the context of ANOVA in order to assess the probability of successfully rejecting the null hypothesis if we assume a certain ANOVA design, effect size in the population, sample size and significance level. Power analysis can assist in study design by determining what sample size would be required in order to have a reasonable chance of rejecting the null hypothesis when the alternative hypothesis is true. Effect size Several standardized measures of effect have been proposed for ANOVA to summarize the strength of the association between a predictor, S, and the dependent variable or the overall standardized difference of the complete model. Standardized effect size estimates facilitate comparison of findings across studies and disciplines. However, while standardized effect sizes are commonly used in much of the professional literature, a non-standardized measure of effect size that has immediately meaningful units may be preferable for reporting purposes. Follow-up analysis, it is always appropriate to carefully consider outliers. They have a disproportionate impact on statistical conclusions and are often the result of errors. Model confirmation, it is prudent to verify that the assumptions of ANOVA have been met. Residuals are examined or analyzed to confirm homoscedasticity and gross normality. Residuals should have the appearance of noise when plotted as a function of anything including time and modeled data values. Trends hinder at interactions among factors or among observations. One rule of thumb, if the largest standard deviation is less than twice the smallest standard deviation, we can use methods based on the assumption of equal standard deviations and our results will still be approximately correct. Follow-up tests, a statistically significant effect in ANOVA is often followed up with one or more different follow-up tests. 
This can be done in order to assess which groups are different from which other groups or to test various other focused hypotheses. Follow-up tests are often distinguished in terms of whether they are planned or post hoc. Planned tests are determined before looking at the data and post hoc tests are performed after looking at the data. Often one of the treatments is none, so the treatment group can act as a control. Done its test tests whether each of the other treatment groups has the same mean as the control. Post hoc tests such as Tukey's range test most commonly compare every group mean with every other group mean and typically incorporate some method of controlling for type I errors. Comparisons, which are most commonly planned, can be either simple or compound. Simple comparisons compare one group mean with one other group mean. Compound comparisons typically compare two sets of groups means where one set has two or more groups. Comparisons can also look at tests of trend such as linear and quadratic relationships, when the independent variable involves ordered levels. Following ANOVA with pairwise multiple comparison tests has been criticized on several grounds. There are many such tests and recommendations regarding their use are vague or conflicting. Study designs and ANOVAs, there are several types of ANOVA. Many statisticians base ANOVA on the design of the experiment, especially on the protocol that specifies the random assignment of treatments to subjects. The protocol's description of the assignment mechanism should include a specification of the structure of the treatments and of any blocking. It is also common to apply ANOVA to observational data using an appropriate statistical model. Some popular designs use the following types of ANOVA. One-way ANOVA is used to test for differences among two or more independent groups, for example different levels of urea application in a crop. Typically, however, the one-way ANOVA is used to test for differences among at least three groups, since the two-group case can be covered by a t-test. When there are only two means to compare, the t-test and the ANOVAF test are equivalent. The relation between ANOVA and T is given by FAR equals AT2. Factorial ANOVA is used when the experimenter wants to study the interaction effects among the treatments. Repeated measures ANOVA is used when the same subjects are used for each treatment. Multivariate analysis of variance is used when there is more than one response variable. ANOVA cautions, balanced experiments are relatively easy to interpret. Unbalanced experiments offer more complexity. For single factor ANOVA, the adjustment for unbalanced data is easy, but the unbalanced analysis lacks both robustness and power. For more complex designs, the lack of balance leads to further complications. The orthogonality property of main effects and interactions present in balanced data does not carry over to the unbalanced case. This means that the usual analysis of variance techniques do not apply. Consequently, the analysis of unbalanced factorials is much more difficult than that for balanced designs. In the general case, the analysis of variance can also be applied to unbalanced data, but then the sums of squares, mean squares, and F ratios will depend on the order in which the sources of variation are considered. The simplest techniques for handling unbalanced data restore balance by either throwing out data or by synthesizing missing data. More complex techniques use regression. ANOVA is a significance test. The American Psychological Association holds the view that simply reporting significance is insufficient and that reporting confidence bounds is preferred. While ANOVA is conservative against multiple comparisons in one dimension, it is not conservative against comparisons in multiple dimensions. Generalizations ANOVA is considered to be a special case of linear regression which in turn is a special case of the general linear model. All consider the observations to be the sum of a model and a residual to be minimized. The Kruskala-Euro-Wallace test and the Friedman test are non-parametric tests, which do not rely on an assumption of normality. History, while the analysis of variance reached fruition in the 20th century, antecedents extend centuries into the past according to Stigler. These include hypothesis testing, the partitioning of sums of squares, experimental techniques and the additive model. Laplace was performing hypothesis testing in the 1770s. 
the development of least squares methods by Laplace and Gauss circa 1800 provided an improved method of combining observations. It also initiated much study of the contributions to sums of squares. Laplace soon knew how to estimate a variance from a residual sum of squares. By 1827 Laplace was using least squares methods to address ANOVA problems regarding measurements of atmospheric tides. Before 1800 astronomers had isolated observational errors resulting from reaction times and had developed methods of reducing the errors. The experimental methods used in the study of the personal equation were later accepted by the emerging field of psychology which developed strong experimental methods to which randomization and blinding were soon added. An eloquent non-mathematical explanation of the additive effects model was available in 1885. Sir Ronald Fisher introduced the term variance, and proposed a formal analysis of variance in a 1918 article The Correlation Between Relatives on the Supposition of Mendelian Inheritance. His first application of the analysis of variance was published in 1921. Analysis of variance became widely known after being included in Fisher's 1925 book Statistical Methods for Research Workers. Randomization models were developed by several researchers. The first was published in Polish by Neyman in 1923. One of the attributes of ANOVA which ensured its early popularity was computational elegance. The structure of the additive model allows solution for the additive coefficients by simple algebra rather than by matrix calculations. In the era of mechanical calculators this simplicity was critical. The determination of statistical significance also required access to tables of the F function which was supplied by early statistics texts. See also Footnotes Notes References Anscom, F. J. The Validity of Comparative Experiments Journal of the Royal Statistical Society Series 111, 181 Euro 211 doi 10.2307 slash 2,984,159. JSTORA 2,984,159. MRA 30,181. Bailey, RA Design of Comparative Experiments. Cambridge University Press. ISBN A 978-0-521-68357-9 A pre-publication chapters are available online. Bell, Gerald Van. Statistical Rules of Thumb. Hoboken, New Jersey, Wiley. ISBN A 978-0-470-14448-0 A, Cochrane, William G. Cox. Gertrude M. Experimental Designs. New York, Wiley. ISBN A 978-0-471-54567-5 Cohen, Jacob. Statistical Power Analysis for the Behavior Sciences. Routledge ISBN 978-0-8058-0283-0 Cohen, Jacob. Statistics A Power Primer. Psychology Bulletin 112, 155 A Euro 159 DOI, 101037 slash 0033 2909 PMIDA 19565683 A, Cox, David R. Planning of Experiments. Reprinted as ISBN 978-0-471-57429-3, Cox, DR Principles of Statistical Inference. Cambridge, New York, Cambridge University Press. ISBN A 978-0-521-68567-2A, Friedman, David A. 2005. Statistical Models, Theory and Practice, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 978-0-521-67105-7, Gelman, Andrew. Analysis of Variance. Why it is more important than ever. The Annals of Statistics 33, 1 Euro 53 doi. 
10.1214-0090536040000048 Gelman, Andrew. Variants, Analysis of. The New Palgrave Dictionary of Economics. Basingstoke, Hampshire, New York, Palgrave Macmillan. ISBN A978-0-333-78000-0. Hinkelman, Klaus and Kempthorne, Oscar. Design and Analysis of Experiments. Iron 2. Wiley. ISBN A978-0-470-38500-0. Howell, David C. Statistical Methods for Psychology. Pacific Grove, California, Dewberry Thompson Learning. ISBN A 0 534 37770 Xer, Kemp Thorne, Oscar. The Design and Analysis of Experiments Wiley ed. Robert E. Krieger. ISBN A 0 88275 105 0 Lehman, E. L. Testing Statistical Hypotheses. John Wiley and Sons. Montgomery. Douglas C. Design and Analysis of Experiments. New York, Wiley. ISBN A978-0-471-31600-0. Moore, David S. and McCabe, George P. Introduction to the Practice of Statistics. W. H. Freeman and Company. ISBN 0-7167-9657-0. Rosenbaum, Paul R. Observational Studies. New York, Springer Verlag. ISBN 978-0-387-98967-9, Schwa Copyright, Henry. The Analysis of Variance. New York, Wileyer, Stigler, Stephen M. A History of Statistics at the Measurement of Uncertainty Before 1900. Cambridge, Massachusetts. Belknot Press of Harvard University Press. ISBN A 0 674 40340-1A, Wilkinson, Leland. Statistical Methods in Psychology Journals. Guidelines and Explanations. American Psychologist 54, 594 Euro 604 DOI. 10.1037 slash 0003 066x54.8.594a. Further reading, Box, GEP Non Normality and Tests on Variances. Biometrica 40, 318 a Euro 335. JSTORA 2,333,350a. Box. GEP Some Theorems on Quadratic Forms Applied in the Study of Analysis of Variance Problems, I Effect of Inequality of Variance in the One-Way Classification. The Annals of Mathematical Statistics 25, 290 DOI, 10.12141177728786A, Box, GEP Some Theorems on Quadratic Forms Applied in the Study of Analysis of Variance Problems, 2. Effects of inequality of variance and of correlation between errors in the two way classification. The Annals of Mathematical Statistics 25, 484 DOI, 10.12141177728717A, Kaliaski, Tadeus and Kagayama, Sampei. Block Designs, a Randomization Approach, Volume I, Analysis. Lecture Notes in Statistics 150. New York, Springer Verlag. ISBN A 0 387 98578 6 Christensen, Ronald. Plain Answers to Complex Questions, The Theory of Linear Models. New York, Springer. ISBN A 0 387 95361 2 Cox, David R. and Reed. Nancy M. The Theory of Design of Experiments ISBN 978-1-58488-195-7. Fisher, Ronald. Studies in Crop Variation. I. An Examination of the Yield of Dressed Grain from Broad Bark. Journal of Agricultural Science 11, 107 a Euro 135 doi. 
10.1017 per second 00218596000037500 R. Friedman, David A. Pisani, Robert. Purvis, Roger Statistics, 4th edition. W. W. Norton and Company ISBN 978-0-393-92972-0, Hetmansberger, T. P. McKean, J. W. Edward Arnold, ed. Robust Nonparametric Statistical Methods. Kendall's Library of Statistics. Volume 5. New York, John Wiley and Sons. Incorporated PP as if plus 467 PP ISBN A 0 340 54937 8. Mra 1604954. A. Lentner, Marvin. Thomas Bishop. Experimental Design and Analysis. P.O. Box 884, Blacksburg, Virginia, 24063, Valley Book Company. ISBN A 0 9616255 2 Xa, Tabaknik, Barbara G. and Fidel, Linda S. Using Multivariate Statistics. Boston, Pearson International Edition. ISBN 978 0 205 45938 4. Y. Michael J. The Coordinate Free Approach to Linear Models. Cambridge Series in Statistical and Probabilistic Mathematics. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press pp as if plus 199. ISBN A978-0-521-86842-6. 2 million 2283455 A. External links. SOCRANOVA Activity and Interactive Applet. Examples of all ANOVA and ANCOVA models with up to three treatment factors, including randomized block, split plot, repeated measures, and Latin squares, and their analysis in our NIST Semitech e Handbook of Statistical Methods, Section 7.4.3, are the means equal?